Welcome back to the Event House channel, your home for all things hospitality. I'm your host, Jill Goldfein. Today, we're focusing on diversity, equity, and inclusion for a few reasons. One, because it's important and overdue. Two, because it's Black History Month. In a bit, you will meet Greg DeShields, who is involved in a brand new nonprofit organization that is empowering and educating about diversity in hospitality. But first, here's a video from Talia Fox that is a great introduction to why and how this issue pertains to us because we are all in this together. So let's get started. So I get this question all of the time. It's probably the most important question that every organization needs to ask yourself when it comes to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Have you asked it yet? Well, let me tell you what it is. It is, what do you do about the people that really, in their heart of hearts, don't get why diversity, inclusion, and equity is relevant to the work that they do. Right? What happens when, and let's just put this, I, I, people know the work that I do, so I don't agree with this standpoint, but we have to have some empathy and some understanding. You go to work, let's say you're a scientist, you're an engineer, and you're asked to do diversity and inclusion training, you're asked to show up to these sessions, and there are people sitting in the room saying, what does this have to do with the work that I do? We cannot ignore these people. We cannot act as if this idea or this feeling does not exist. We have to face it, we have to embrace it, and we have to make space to talk about it because it's a fair question. So my question to you is, how do you answer that? So here is the thing. Diversity, equity, and inclusion is the main thing that builds culture, that creates the environment in which innovation and which work can thrive and move forward. It is not always about um, how we take one particular group and protect them and move them forward, although that needs to happen as well, but it's literally about creating an environment where you can extract maximum value from its people. And so for those that are struggling with why it's important, let me ask you this. How would you feel if every time you gave an idea at a meeting that somebody ignored you and shot it down? How would you feel if you went to eight interviews, nine interviews, ten interviews, only to get a response, no, 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 even though you have an Ivy League education? How would you feel if you were trying to work on a really important science project and then you tried to present this idea and your leader literally shot it down before they could even hear what the idea was about? This is the experience of lots of people every day and it's really not them that's, that's missing out. It's those that don't get it. They don't get what they are missing, the value that they are missing when we don't appropriately build a culture where it is diverse, it is inclusive, and it is equitable. So your answer to those people that are having an issue with diversity and inclusion is you want to say, I get it, let's talk about it, but this is not just about everybody else, this is about you, and we want an environment where your work can be acknowledged and can be used to really contribute to the value of this organization. So ladies and gentlemen, diversity and inclusion is about all of us. And it also is about those individuals that struggle every day and have a history of having to deal with challenges that most people that aren't a part of these groups would never be able to understand. Get healthy, get happy, get results. Create a diversity and inclusion plan today. Here with me today is Greg DeShields. Greg serves as the executive director of the Philadelphia CVB PHL Diversity Program, which is designed to raise Philadelphia's image as a diverse destination. As a result of the pandemic, Greg is now taking on a second role with a brand new nonprofit. He is the executive director of Tourism Diversity Matters, which aligns very closely with his PHL diversity and his own core values. Welcome, Greg. I um, would like to hear about a little bit about your background, your professional background leading up to 2020. You know, I'm a native Philadelphian. Uh, I was someone who always had an aspiration, honestly, to go into journalism. Uh, so I um, went to the Hyde Regency Atlanta in their management training program. Oh, great. And was in Atlanta for about three and a half years. 
uh, came back to Philadelphia, went to work for a hotel company called uh, Dunphy Hotels, kind of settled some roots, went to work for a local Sheraton hotel, uh, later went to work for a, um, was a combination residential and hotel property. It was brand new. Later had my midlife crisis at 37, yay, and <laughs> realized that I didn't want to work in hotels forever. And from there, um, I moved into um, running a nonprofit uh, hospitality training program, uh, was part of the civil rights movement, had a lot of political connections. Uh, funded through legislative dollars, just was a great place to make an exit out of the industry. Uh -huh. uh, ran that program for seven years, uh, then was recruited by Temple University, um, which was, I think, the pivotal point in my career that for about 11 years, uh, and then went to work for the Fox School of Business. Uh, to kind of put it, but the job I have now was the job I always wanted. I had so you are at the Philadelphia CVB and you are involved in their uh, PHL diversity. Uh, and I wanna hear about the podcast, which goes back full circle to your journalism roots. The Convention and Visitors Bureau is to lead a division that is prioritized on securing diverse and multicultural meetings and conventions. Uh, we booked of the 19 top LGBT groups, 12 of them within a year and a half of starting the division. Wow. So the work that we've been able to do has not only brought economic value to the city, but it's elevated that community in terms of being able to certainly display the economic value that LGBT travelers bring to uh, a city when it comes from meeting and conventions. Tell Here me about how 2020 it. came about and affected you and your position there. Our mayor said that we were going to move towards a lockdown. Really a shock because um, we went home like most people in our industry thinking three weeks. We faced a staggering list of cancellation. So our industry continues to struggle. Um, I, when I say that we haven't hit bottom, you know, as an industry, we've reacted to everything that's been thrown to us. However, charting the course of where we go from here is still one that is very much up in the air. So having worked in an academic institution and advised undergrad and grad students, you know, I had to put a lot of that practical experience into play. One of the things I did that I was extremely proud of is I um, got my certification as a, um, a certified diversity executive from the Society of Diversity, shared with a number of the universities that, you know, you certainly asked me to be a guest speaker, but I'd love to be an adjunct. I mean, I had been an adjunct for 13 years for Temple, so I'm an adjunct with three different institutions, which is a great way to kind of begin to build out. I am um, still thinking in terms of journalism, uh, love to write. So I partnered with another writer who's in Atlanta uh, and we developed a column for an industry magazine um, and we became a official freelance writers for them. Um, they asked me to come on as a consultant, um, but our industry still struggled. So I kind of doubled down uh, started to do a lot more specialized work with them, um, focused on the expertise and skills that I had gotten through my certification. Um, and, you know, I guess some people might say by the grace of God, uh, they just recently offered me an opportunity to be the executive director of this organization called Tourism Diversity Matters. Yes. Our focus is to operate in a collaborative way to engage a variety of organizations in our industry that may not have a long-term strategy for a DEI undertaking, which we can be a collaborative partner. And we'd find organizations that were doing incredible things despite uh, the impact of the coronavirus. And the Black Doctors Consortium has been an amazing organization that has put all efforts in providing uh, resources, testing, vaccine within the African American community, we, you know, spent a morning uh, providing cookies, coffee, juice, and just, you know, love, hope, and perseverance wishes uh, to let them know that they do a great job. So, Babashi is an organization that provides uh, health and human services for Black LGBT as well as women uh, uh, who are impacted with breast cancer um, and other um, uh, health conditions. 
Wow. Uh, they had a staff of about 35 people who had had an absolutely horrible week dealing with COVID. Uh, and we came out, um, brought them donuts, cookies, coffee, and it was the only time that week that the staff actually had an opportunity to smile. So going forward, um, we're certainly hopeful that the city of Philadelphia will pick up with its convention business and uh, travel and tourism. Uh, and I know that you are doing your podcast, so I guess you'll continue to do those as well and juggle it all. <laughs> I will. I very much look forward to it. I have a couple of really exciting podcasts scheduled. Thank you so much, Greg. It has been amazing to hear your story. I really appreciate your taking the time to share it with us. At Event House, we think this is such an important issue and we hope you've learned something from this video. Please like, subscribe, and share. Up next are some profound quotes on diversity, equity, and inclusion.